Is the Frost Commander 140 from Thermalright able to take command over the Noctua NH D15? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I release new videos every week on PC cases, CPU coolers and PC case fans. Now before I get into the review, I just want to have full disclosure. Thermalright did send me over this cooler to test and review, but as always all the opinions expressed in this video are mine, so if you end up liking this video, please hit that like button, and if you really like the video, hit that subscribe button, because it really does help out a lot. Now I'm going to start off with a quick overview of the Frost Commander lineup. The Frost Commander 140 has five 8mm heat pipes, and there are three Frost Commander 140 CPU coolers. There is the Frost Commander 140, the Frost Commander 140 White, and the Frost Commander 140 Black. Now what I have here and have tested is the Frost Commander 140 White. So then, let's see what comes in the box. There is the heatsink and fans, of course. There is the instruction guide, two sets of fan clips, a small tube of thermal compound, the mounting hardware for Intel and AMD. There is also a fan splitter. Taking a closer look at the heatsink, this is a twin tower cooler with five 8mm continuous heat pipes. These heat pipes are not direct contact, but the cold plate is pure copper, which has been nickel plated. The white coating on the heatsink does look very well coated. I don't see any missing spots on it. Now for the two fans, they are different. There is a 120mm fan, the Thermalrite TLC12 Pro W. It is white. It has a four pin PWM connector. This fan has nine blades. It also has little rubber pads on all the corners on both sides. It has a max rated RPM of 1850. And the bearing type is SFDB, so a fluid dynamic bearing. The second fan is a Thermalrite TLD14X white, or W. It again has a four pin connector. There is also nine blades on this fan. And again, it does have rubber pads on all the corners. Now this fan has a max rated RPM of 1800 and has the same bearing type being an SFDB. Okay, the dimensions of this cooler with the fans attached is 160 millimeters high by 154 millimeters wide by 148 millimeters deep. So based off these dimensions, you will have ramp clearance issues if you have tall or RGB heat spreaders. So just something to keep in mind. For socket compatibility, the Frost Commander 140 is compatible out of the box with most mainstream Intel sockets. It is also compatible with the HPC lineup from Intel. Now it is possible to buy an LGA 1700 kit, but you do then have to buy that separately. For AMD compatibility, it's compatible with AM4, which means it will be future compatible with AM5. Okay, moving on to how to install the CPU cooler. I will be installing this CPU cooler onto an AM4 motherboard. The installation between Intel and AMD sockets are different, so if you are planning to install this on an Intel socket, please check the installation guide. Now as always, before you start, make sure you have a flat, clean, and sturdy surface. You should also have a mat, preferably an anti-static mat, but in a pinch you can always use the box that your motherboard came in. You will also need a PH2 screwdriver. And since we're installing this on an AM4 motherboard, we will need the backplate that came with our AM4 motherboard. Align the holes on the motherboard to the backplate. Then with the motherboard flat, place the plastic spacers over each hole. Then find the AM4 mounting bars and mounting screws. Place the mounting screws through the holes in the mounting bars. Then align the mounting screws with the plastic spacers. Screw the mounting screws into the holes on the backplate making sure the mounting bars are facing in. Once the mounting bars are installed, it's time to clean off the CPU with some isopropyl alcohol. Then apply your own or the provided thermal compound to your CPU's IHS. Now make sure to remove the fans from the heatsink and as well the sticker from the bottom of the cold plate. Once you have, place the heatsink cold plate down onto your CPU's IHS, making sure to align the screw threads on the mounting bars to the screws on the fastening bars. Then screw the two spring retention screws on the fastening bar to the mounting bars. Once you're done that, you can install the fans onto the heatsink 
and then plug the PWM connectors into your motherboard. If you need to, you can use the included Y fan cable to plug both fans into your CPU fan header. And we're done. It is that simple. Okay, it's time to go over the fan's PWM range. First, the C12 Pro. So at 100% PWM, the motherboard is showing the RPM of this fan at 1960-ish. And when I drop the PWM down to zero, the motherboard is showing the RPM at 560-ish. Now for the D14X, at 100% PWM, this motherboard is showing the RPM at 1920-ish. And when I drop the PWM down to zero, the motherboard is showing the RPM at 630-ish. So these fans do have a good RPM range. Now before getting to the temperature testing, I wanted to quickly go over the sound level testing. So the Frost Commander 140 is a fair bit louder than the Peerless Assassin 120 and the NHD 15 with a DBA of 44.2. So this is something to keep in mind when you're looking at the full speed charts. Okay, the temperature testing. If you haven't watched my CPU cooler testing methodology video, I strongly suggest you do because it's where I go over the how and what of my CPU cooler testing. I'll have it in a card above and I'll also have it linked down in the description. Starting off with the full speed 87 watt test, the average CPU for this cooler was 70.7C, which has it in the top three. Then in the 35 dBA noise equalized 87 watt test, the average CPU only went up by 1C to 71.6C. So again, there's only a one Celsius difference between the 35 dBA and full speed test, which means there's really no difference whatsoever. Now for the 150 watt testing, with the fans running at full speed, the average CPU temperature was 74.2C, which does have it topping this chart. Then in the noise equalized 150 watt test, the CPU had an average temperature of 76.3C. And that is good enough to be the second best cooler on this chart, with only the D15 having a lower CPU temperature, which is actually pretty impressive. Okay, so what do I think of the Frost Commander 140? First off, it's a great CPU cooler at a really competitive price. It performed really well in the 87 and 150 watt testing at both full speed and 35 dBA. Now it was actually able to dethrone the D15 when at full speed, but as I went over at the beginning, it is quite a bit louder than the D15. So you may have to take that victory with a grain of salt. But the Frost Commander 140 is only 60 USD when the D15 is 100 USD. So yeah, take that as you will as well. Now, much like the Assassin King 120 and the Peerless Assassin 120 do, the Frost Commander 140 has an issue. And that's Thermalright has all these coolers priced very close to one another. There's only a five to 10 USD difference as you go up in size, and there's only a one to two Celsius difference as you go up in size. So is it really worth going up in size? As always, the pricing might be different in your area, so it really does come down to availability and pricing in your area on which one makes more sense for you. And don't get me wrong, all three coolers tested really well, so I wouldn't say getting any of them is a bad idea. You just need to understand thermally, there's just not gonna be that much of a difference especially when gaming. Well, that's all I got for this one. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. Please follow me on Twitter at HFG underscore YT. I also have the HFG Discord server. There is a link in the description to it. I post all the charts for all my CPU coolers, cases, and fans on the Discord channel. So that's a great place to get all the most current up-to-date information. Uh, you might want to uh, check out these videos here. They should be along the same lines as what you just watched if you did like this video. And as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.